I'm not going to need to change this machine for a long, long time. I'm so excited about the amount of time I'm going to save with this. It's going to pay for itself in absolutely no time at all. This right here on this table is a computer that I have been excited about for, well, way longer than it's even existed. Three years ago, nearly three years ago, I started a business making videos and taking photos, and I do this for a number of clients, and the biggest issue I have had over that time is the speed of that thing there. That is a 2017 iMac. And I'll talk a bit more about that later, but I'm replacing it now with this, and this is the MacBook Pro M1 Max, and I'm probably as excited about this as I was about when I got my first PC back in 1996. This thing is gonna save me so much time as a video editor, and time is the thing that I value most, so, Let's get straight into it. Believe it or not, I've had this for three days and I've been waiting for a, a moment to make this video. So now I am finally going to open it. Don't even need a knife to get through the cellophane. Maybe I do. So one of the first things you notice about it is how heavy this is. When it came in the other box, I had to open the box straight away to make sure that they've not just sent me bricks because this is a really heavy piece of kit. And I'll just go through the specs quickly. You can see on the back M1 Max version, it's 32 gigabyte with a one terabyte SSD. Now, the reason I decided against upgrading the RAM was firstly the cost, this thing cost enough as it was. But secondly, a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the M1 Max chip rather than the RAM. I, I've got 40 gig of RAM in that thing, I've never had an issue with it. So I thought 32 is probably enough and there's a lot of videos on YouTube comparing the RAM and I think I've gone the right way. The other thing I did consider upgrading was the SSD. That has got half a terabyte in it. This has got one terabyte. So I am used to using portable drives and for the cost of it, again, I just didn't think it was worth it, especially not when I've got to replace that monitor. Again, I will talk about that later. Let's get into this. So satisfying. Okay. First thing I notice is how much thicker it is. So I'll bring out the other one in a minute because I've got the old MacBook Pro as well, but it is is a lot thicker. <laughs> it is heavy. That's nice. There we go, it feels so nice. It feels a lot smoother around the edges. The old one's quite sharp edged, but this just feels lovely. Let's see if we can get this off. Such a satisfying thing to open. So that's about it really for the unboxing element of it. So the main thing I want to do in this video as a filmmaker and photographer is speed test this against this iMac here and also probably against this 2017 MacBook Pro as well. Let's get into it. Adobe's two device limit for software meant I could only run the tests on the iMac and the new MacBook Pro but you can be certain that the 2017 MacBook Pro is considerably slower than the iMac I'm about to run the tests on. Okay, a week's gone by and I've had a real chance to properly use the new MacBook over the course of that week for the things I'd usually do in my daily life as a video producer, and as a photographer as well. So I've extensively used Adobe Premiere and Adobe Lightroom, and I'll go into my findings later on in the video. The first things I really wanted to have a look at and cover were just 
the general features of the MacBook and just give you my thoughts on them. So it's kind of a review that's not a review, it's more my findings as a content creator and how this machine is just gonna really help me out on a day-to-day -day basis. So firstly, the physical aspects of the machine. It, as I said in the unboxing, it feels heavier and it is a bit heavier, but not as heavier as I thought it would be. The old MacBook Pro that weighed about 1.8 eight kilos and i think this new one is about 2.15 so it's it's like a can of coke difference in weight so when you're carrying it around in your bag you're probably not going to notice but the reason i think it felt heavier was just because of the size of it it is is thicker that might be a problem to some people but it isn't to me the edges are more rounded it just feels it feels nicer to carry about so onto the functionality the screen is a major improvement in my opinion over my old macbook pro it's the apple Liquid Retina XDR, I think, is the marketing term they've come up with for this. I'm not going to go into any technical specifics because I just don't know enough about it. But moving things around on the screen, everything feels a lot smoother. The blacks are very black and it is just a lovely screen to look at. As you'd expect with Apple stuff, straight out of the box, the color calibration is is really close to, to being accurate. I am going to run a calibration on this when I get my hands on a calibrator, but for what I do, generally speaking, I don't need to change it much. When I ran calibration on my old iMac, it barely changed it. There are also presets that you can go into in display to change it to BT709, for example, if you are processing SDR video and want a really accurate profile straight out of the box. You don't need to do a lot to the screen to make sure you're getting accurate colors out of this, which as a content creator is just exactly what you want, really. The only other thing to mention is the notch at the top where the camera sit. Now, this is probably bigger than it needs to be given the size of the camera, but I've never noticed it bother me. And to be honest, when I'm sat here at my desk and the keen-eyed amongst you might have noticed a slight difference between the start of the video and now, but I tend to use a big screen more so now I've got a new monitor that I will speak about later on. So on to the main bits that I think are going to make a huge difference to my life and hopefully your lives as well and it is the performance when it comes to both Premiere, Lightroom and Photoshop. First of all the performance in Premiere Pro is outstanding. It is so much better than it was on my 2019 iMac. I'm using a Sony a7S III and the footage when I pulled it into my old iMac was really slow, it was very laggy, especially when using slow motion mode. So if I was doing 4K in 100 or 120p, pulling that into a timeline on my old iMac, it was just unusable. Even in 1 8th quality, it was unusable. I had to generate proxies, which was a total pain. This new one absolutely flies through it. It's just, it it's, you know it's a dream it it just doesn't lag at all it doesn't slow down it just cuts through it so speedily and honestly i'm so impressed with it and for you canon users as well i've actually downloaded some r5 um i think this is 4k 60p footage and as you can see here it, it's exactly the same with that it is so responsive and so impressive so what i did to test it was use a couple of functions that i i do properly so I, I've, I've got my sony log footage and i've applied color correction to it that's made no difference to speed at all it's still absolutely brilliant so something i did want to test was using warp stabilizer which i use from time to time to stabilize some of my footage so i took a 10 second slow motion clip 10 second 100p clip and I applied warp stabilizer to do it. On my iMac, that took three minutes and 50 seconds. On this, it took 22 seconds. That's gonna save me so much time. It's gonna save you guys so much time as well. And one of the main things that bothered me about using the iMac was I'd sit there for minutes on end waiting for stuff to, to stabilize or to render or to export, and I'd get distracted and I'd do other stuff, and it, I, I just wasted so much time over my weeks whilst I'm doing that. That's pretty much a thing of the past now. I'm gonna be so much more productive on this machine. To give you an insight into export times, uh, the first thing I exported on the MacBook Pro was a 32 minute long 
video for YouTube that I edited. It was majority 4K footage. There was a fair few images in there. There was quite a bit of animated text and my iMac took 58 minutes to export that in 4K. The MacBook Pro, it wasn't as quick as I anticipated. I think, I think a lot of people in their review videos have egged it up a little bit, but it took 18 minutes, so less than a third of the time, which is still quite amazing. More recently, I've done a 22 minute YouTube video. Again, a lot of 4K footage in that. And I exported a draft of this in 1080p just to test it. It took only three minutes, 18 seconds to export that draft. The 4K version took, I think it was seven and a half minutes, seven and a half minutes to export a 4K video that's 22 minutes long. Honestly, it is, it's so impressive. And when you need to make tiny changes towards the end of a project in your timeline and you've got to go through a whole export again, this, this could honestly, it could save hours. I'm so excited about the amount of time I'm going to save with this. It's going to pay for itself in absolutely no time at all. Moving on to Lightroom. I've probably not used this as extensively as Premiere over the last week, but you can see from this that just spotting things out, using masks, switching between the modes, scanning, scrolling through your older images, applying presets, it is all so much quicker than you're probably used to if you're using an old machine. Even generating an, an HDR image out of five bracketed images, yes, it's not lightning quick, but it is significantly quicker than anything you've probably used before. Exporting two images as separate layers to Photoshop, again, ridiculously quick. Honestly, I know I've said it before, but I cannot believe how quick this is. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with it, delighted with it and when I bought my iMac, I thought it was going to last me for five years. And I was so disappointed when after sort of two and a half years, when I got the A7S III, how slow it was at processing those files. This, like, I can't see me changing my camera anytime soon. So if, if it can fly through the footage from this camera, I'm not going to need to change this machine for a long, long time, unless Adobe changed their software significantly, which let's be honest, might happen. So a couple of final things really, I wanted to touch on the battery performance, which someone asked me about when I posed a question on Instagram. I've not done extensive battery testing, but I did have it hooked up to my monitor and I had an external drive plugged into it and I unplugged it from the mains and I ran Premiere. I edited for two hours straight. I think it was two hours, 15 minutes and the battery dropped from 100% to 70%. So that's really significant. The old MacBook Pro wouldn't have lasted that long with a full battery and I'm only down to 70% after two and a quarter hours. I had a meeting that I took it to the other day. I, I had it open for the majority of the meeting. It was probably about an hour, maybe 90 minutes and I was typing some things on notes during the meeting and looking for a couple of things online and I just closed it and I came home and I thought, I wonder how much battery I used. 1%. I'm not kidding. I came home and it was on 99% battery. It's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I think the claims about the battery are all true. The battery is just incredible. A couple more things. The keyboard is quite a bit different in this to the old one. I don't really know how to describe the keyboard, but it's nice. I like using it. The trackpad is, as you'd expect, um, it's an Apple trackpad. Yeah. Having a card slot back, brilliant, makes things so much easier. Again, having more ports as well, just simplifies the whole workflow. And I can't believe it took Apple that long to bring these features back. But now that they have, I think, I think the MacBook Pro truly earns that Pro title back again. As I alluded to before, I have actually had to completely change my desk setup to, to fit this in. I was just on an iMac with a second screen before and I barely used the second screen. Now I've had to buy a new monitor. I've opted for this one behind me, which is a BenQ 32 inch 4K monitor, which is incredible. Um, I'll probably do a proper video about my desk setup once I've got everything finalized. The main issue I'm having at the moment is that there, there just isn't enough space for the MacBook and the screen on the desk at the same time. So it's a bit awkward, I need to work that out and I can't just have something next to it because it's a sit-stand desk. Yeah, wires, things being pulled off, problems. I'll work it out in another video. But if you have any questions about the new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, 
please put them in the comments below. I will answer them all. And if there's any appetite for it, I can actually run some more in-depth tests versus the 2019 iMac if people wish. So give us a shout in the comments if you want me to test anything specifically before I get rid of the iMac because I need to sell this quite quickly because this needs properly paying for. I can't have it sitting on a credit card for too long. Also, if this video is useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like it and please consider subscribing as well. And thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful to you. Until next time, bye.